<laughs> peace is real <laughs> this is so you israel what now a lecture i am nobody but your sister and i am here to help you in lecturing you and today's lecture is going is a follow-up of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. This is a must, no must watch. So, a follow-up for the Feast of Unleavened Bread, get right to it. I want to start by saying the reason I start a month early to remove leaven is to start eating those products. A week or two weeks isn't enough time to consume food you don't eat daily. Cake mix boxes, as an example. My home purchased cake mixes for, for weekly Sabbaths. And when they were on sale, we stocked up. So there were plenty. There would be plenty. So starting a month early also helps to put a pause or a halt on purchases seeing and using what is already had okay now every year for some reason after the feast of unleavened bread i will buy the two jars of the um of yeast two large jars of yeast the instant yeast and the active dry yeast okay that i rarely to never use it's only until spring cleaning for unleavened bread that I will get anxious to use the yeast to make pretzels. I wanted to make bread throughout the um, year. <laughs> it never happened. Life happens. So, last year, or year before last, I stopped purchasing those jars. One would be open and the other never used. Or neither one of them used <laughs> so i encourage everyone to pull out the leaven early which could give you time to find what you don't want to find during the appointed time in keeping the feast of unleavened bread now concerning the throwing away of it all Throw it away. Don't give it to a neighbor, friend, or family member to hold for you. That's a no-no. Borderline sin. Feelings folks have. I don't want to throw it away. It's a waste of money. It's a waste of food. Your feelings about throwing it away doesn't matter. Forget your thoughts and feeling and follow the instructions given, which is to throw it away. Don't be a hard-headed adult child having a tantrum and pouting. If a, per if a parent instructs a child to throw away something, it is expected that they do as they were told. The parent don't want to find it was placed elsewhere but the trash. Not on the counter, not on a table, not underneath something, and surely not given to someone else to hold. But the parent expects slash requires obedience. So throw it away without mumbling and griping, complaining about it. Now, if you feel so strongly about throwing it away, 
it must be given to the other nations. Never to our own people because they're supposed to be keeping these biblical feasts as well. Give it to the uncircumcised nations. In case you didn't hear, for those that didn't hear me in the back, you can't give it to nobody else on this side. You can't give that food, that leaven, to our people. Only unclean nations. I had to tell them folks in the back. <laughs> My kids got me this one day. They said, Mama, your voice so soft. We got you this blow horn. So when you call us, we can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> so, never our own people. If that statement seems crazy, let me point out to you, these corner stores where the Revelations 2 and 9, 3 and 9 people are the owners. In the hood, you have these deli corner stores. Now, these delis sell pork products. Have you ever noticed these Revelations 2 and 9, 3 and 9 devils? Are not behind a deli counter packaging the pork products they sell because they know not to touch it according to the uncleanliness laws. But you know who they do have packing that unclean meat? Us, our brothers, causing them to be defiled and unclean. They will wait for them, for that brother to come to work to package that unclean meat for them. Oftentimes, too, if you're not sure about a product at the gas station or these corner stores, ask them if they eat pork, because they don't. If they say no, ask if they've eaten the item you're wondering about. These Revelations 2 and 9 and 3 and 9 folks know who we are as a nation. They going about with a stolen heritage. So when I say give it to the other nations, I mean just that. Give it to the other nations and not even to the unbelieving black folks. You can't give it to them either. It's a sin to give it to our people, believers and unbelievers of the truth. And no, no other nation can hold it for you until unleavened bread is over with because your heart is going to tell on you. So avoid unnecessary self-affliction. Back and forth over throwing away the products, the leaven products. If you're new to Israel, if a person stops eating pork, it must go in the trash not given to other unbelieving blacks because they too are not supposed to eat and consume pork. But you are allowed to give it to other nations. Read your Bibles to understand blacks are an adopted nation to the creator, our Elohim. Now, so now, Remember Passover day is the last day to have leaven thrown out. Do not forget to empty the vacuums 
and throw away the garbage bag in the house from the bathroom, bedroom, garage, and kitchen. Throw away the trash bag you just collected leaven in. You're on a no crumb mission. No crumbs, no crumbs. You on a no crumb mission. Let me say it for those in the back. It's a no crumb mission. <laughs> Now, when the Feast of Unleavened Bread starts, and at some point of time, during the week, if you find leaven in your dwellings, dwellings being your home, vehicle, and or office space, don't panic. Don't be discouraged. It's okay. But it's not okay. So what do you do? You throw it away and not eat it. Pray to the Father that you do better next year. You're going to continue the rest of the week keeping the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Don't beat yourself up about it. Give yourself more time next year to clean all your dwellings. Make a checklist of what you expect to go through in each room of the home. A list for bathroom, bedrooms, hallways, living room, dining room, kitchen, vehicle, office space, stash. You know you ain't supposed to hide that cake. Your wife know you got that. Let me stop. <laughs> Okay, office space stash and wearable items such as jackets, coats, book bags, lunch bags, diaper bags. Make a list, then check them off. So, the bedroom, for example, if you have a small trash can, the dresser drawers, under the bed, the closets, vacuum the floor, after room clearing and house cleaning, limit leaven eating to the kitchen only. Make signs. No bread in the homes for this week. No bread, no outside food. Just like right here, I have bigger signs, but I put this one on here because this gets hung up as well. These are the signs that I use around my home on a feast and I went online and was able to print out some of this no outside this was a no outside but mainly that burger no bread <laughs> no bread no outside food okay now if you're a person that change your home around often to get a new feel for the space don't do it this week Give it a rest and wait until after Unleavened Bread is over. So no house project cleaning or changing the house around. Sometimes you'll find what you don't want to find. I'm talking about leaven, such as an individually pack of crackers from a restaurant. <laughs> I don't do house project. No, I don't do house projects this during this week. Okay. So increase your fear. Understand and know by giving your best efforts in doing so, and being mindful of the purpose in which you're doing this. How do you increase your fear? Look, I ask you, where is your fear? Our Heavenly Father deserves respectable fear, such as you would an earthly father who raised you. Your daddy tells you what to do. You do it. So that you don't get punished. 
a father to fe to fear a father a father we fear corrects us directs us instructs us gives us guidance and understanding you grown folks Find your fear and realize yourselves to be adult children as you are to your parents and reverence your daddy, the creator of being. Find your fear, increase it, read daily, Pray often throughout the day. He sent his son to die for us because he wanted. He needed a body. He didn't want no more animals for your sacrifice because we are sinners that willingly sin constantly and running back and forth grabbing those creatures for our sin offerings no more he needed a body like folks want to reach out and grab that child to give a good swatting or just like someone bridge burn cross the line of no return make you want to kill them a body he wanted, a body he sent to walk this earth and kill for his glory. Walk a fine line. Look to do better and be better. Enjoy the feast with gladness in your heart. You are loved. O oh, nation not desired. You are loved. You're loved. Now, concerning those that's challenging in the kitchen when it comes to bacon, like me mm, well with this i can't make unleavened bread i try each year i try doing that month ahead of time or even before that i try i try i can't i, I ain't been successful so again if you didn't watch the last video or even if you did i'm letting you know again Some olive oil. Get you some olive oil. A brush. And store-bought. Store-bought leaven. What you're going to do with the store-bought leaven is you're going to take the olive oil, brush it across both sides, get it nice and oily, nice and oily. Put it on your baking tray, put it in the oven, 350, 375, and let it cook. Let it bake in the oven for about until you smell it or just keep an eye on it. It's just a cracker. But I, I would say if you had to time it um, between five to 10 minutes, anytime after 10 minutes, just check it every two, three minutes because it doesn't take that long for it to, um, for it to brown, <laughs> for it to um, get brown and toasty. You want it toasty, okay? And also, pack your children unleavened bread.
for school, for school lunch. And I'm telling you, when you have this, and yes, again, you are welcome to add your bitter herbs, some um, so, um your salt uh, sprinkled on top, or even um, mix it with the olive oil so that it can be infused already. And spread it across the cracker, put it in the oven, and let it toast. If you want um, extra ingredients, things to add, watch the previous video of the first feast of unleavened bread, okay? So, that will be all. Oh, stores have Passover displays. You can start looking for stores, not all grocery stores, and I'm talking about grocery full-on grocery stores, not corner stores or small stores like um, Aldi's. I'm talking about like Myers, what y'all call them? Rogers, K. Rogers, Kroger's. <laughs> I just heard that, K. Rogers. So that's how I remember real quick, like what was that? Kroger's. So, um, Safeway, um, your big jewels, your big grocery stores, Myers, they you can look for it in April, no, March, March and April. They will have displays. Catch a sale. You can get huge boxes of matzos for five dollars on sale. And yes, you might find if you don't get it um, on, on sale for a box, you might pay $16, $17. If you have a large family, invest in those large boxes. I just threw mine away. Invest in those large boxes um, that have like, I think, four or five boxes on the inside because you need that for the whole week for your family, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and snack. You are to eat unleavened bread with all your meals. And please, pray. Look, a lot of times I be sniffly nose and be... <laughs> because before I start my videos, I am so emotional. Well, not so emotional. I get emotional when I get ready to talk to my people about some, you know, mm, and you know, it's just like, why that? Why, Father? These, why? So I, I'm either crying or uh, cracking up laughing before I actually can sit down and do the lesson. I, I go through, I go through some things, <laughs> cause. I said I kind of got a Jonah spirit like father I don't want to talk to your kids but I need to because we need a lecture they need lecturing they need help so I'm here to help you I'm here to encourage you and I encourage everyone to read your read your book one just fell. Read your book. You got ev every. I don't think they heard me in the back. You got every Sabbath to get through the whole book to actually know something for yourself. To know for yourself. Don't depend on me. I'm not giving you no scriptures. As a matter of fact, I don't want to give you scriptures. Why? Because I had to go through a, a, ser a, a serious moment in my walk. Being spiritually sick over the fact that ain't nobody reading. Because I'm like, how do I know? It's too many Sunday churches out here. And your Sunday preacher, no, you're not reading your book because you're still in his Sunday church. So.
So, ah, mm. <laughs> read your book. And that's the reason why I be uh, um, sniff me, because I'm e either just been giggling, laughing to the father, or crying and mourning for our people. Cry and mourn for our people, because we need it. Now is the time. Pray that eyes are open to see. Ears are open to hear. The mind is open to receive. The heart open. No, the mind open to understanding. The heart open to receive. You have to want this. Not everybody want this. You have to want this. What is, you have to want and seek the kingdom. Are you kingdom bound? Are you looking to be New Jerusalem kingdom bound? So I say, Israel, Excuse my tone when I be speaking because I done been through it. Still going through it. I don't believe or think that I know anything or every single thing there is to know. I'm still learning. But that's going to be it because um, I'm venturing now. Because when I say you need a, we need a talking to, our people need a talking to, we need a lecture. And so I'm giving it. Now, you take this lecture and be encouraged. Increase your fear. When you see me looking this way, this is my E, so I'm always referring to my father. Okay? Hey. Hey, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> mercy so i love you all so much and i might address addressing other nations you other nations you include the strangers that want to be a part of israel let me stop right there because i came with israel y'all want to be y'all want to be with um slave oh mercy here i go this going to be the end, Israel. Get the leaven at your house. Get the leaven at your home. Purge. You're also purging out your own heart, your own thoughts, your own minds. Let it go. Let yourselves go. And put on the Hamashiach, the Christ. Put on this word. Eat and drink it. This is your meat and your medicine and your drink. This word means everything to him. And I'm disappointed because I didn't know a lot of things. Once I came up out of <laughs> my discipline walk, I didn't know a lot of things. Like the fact that not everybody reading, even you, Israel, and I ask, where is your fear? Because we out here offending one another. Let's stop that. And yes, now I'm going to end. Peace. Because I can keep going on and on. Because I want us to do so much better and to be better for our Father who mercy and blessing endures forever. And he wants us to come to him. He seek us. Keep him in remembrance in all your doings. Ask him. Ask. As a matter of fact, real quick. During the winter, I had a, 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 a big fat raccoon. I mean, this raccoon was like the size of three cats. Maybe four. Died on a pile of snow right next door to my home. So I called, I called 211. They gave me a number. 
the number said that they don't come out into my um undisclosed area in which i'm in so i didn't take care of it no i took care of it and then now we had to go to the bottom of the list and wait to be taken care of. I'm like, Father, I called. Now I got to go back to the bottom of the list. Because other things to do. He just recently <laughs> doing a rainstorm. <laughs> doing a rainstorm. Rain and <laughs> wind. There is this log. In the sidewalk. That was covering it and basically kind of block it till it didn't come over on my side of my home right but the one morning from the rain and the wind i looked outside i said is that that dead raccoon in front of my house let me tell you before that raccoon was in front of my house i'm when I walk past my home, I'm looking for an address to call for um, animal control to come pick up this animal. I don't have an address to give them because next door to me is literally a forest. So, <laughs> he put that raccoon <laughs> in front of my house. I said, Father, <laughs> is that a different raccoon or is that the same one? Like, I can't hide two raccoons to fall in the air around here. So, um, I, fi I finally figured out, yeah, that's that same one. So, once he moved that raccoon on my sidewalk, <laughs> I had an address to give animal control. And if you ask, how do I know? Because that log was blocking him and... He was, um, and the raccoon was almost matted down in the grass over this log. I'm like, Father, you so good. You so good to me. You, he makes a way. So ask him. Because I'm like, I don't got no address to give him, so I can't take care of it. <laughs> I almost was like, well, that's your business now. And it is because I'm his business. He <laughs> roly rolled <laughs> that day raccoon on my sidewalk, <laughs> giving me an address to call animal control to be able to give <laughs> an address <laughs> to come pick it up so I didn't have to worry about it because it definitely had to be cleaned up by the new year. <laughs> it was the day before New Year's. You are loved, Israel. Seek him. Seek his guidance and his instructions. Seek him in all the, all the things that you do. He answers. He answers prayers. Unselfishly. Because I said, guess what, Father? I ain't dealing with that raccoon no more right now. until he made a way for me. So a lot of times I don't do nothing unless the father put it on my heart to do it. Even if I want to give to, to some people, the father puts it on my heart to give to who he wants. If, if look, and he makes a way for it to happen. And if he, and if it ain't no way, it wasn't his way. And I even tell my kids, don't ask me for nothing. I'll be like, did you go ask the father? Go ask the father. And then come tell me what you asked the father for. And if he wants for you to have it, he will make a way. And so for real, for real, on, on that note, Israel. <laughs> Enjoy the feast. Increase your fear. Call on him. He is here for you. And he wants us to come to him so bad. Address him as he should be addressed. Like your father. Okay. So with so much love, peace and joy. Shalom.